I'm back at the old village area again. Why? Because I've got another antique camera and I just feel like it draws me here. A, there's nobody around. I love that. I love that. And two, it's a reference. I don't know if anybody will get. The old buildings just seem to want to be photographed by an old camera. I don't know. Oh, and three, I still have not gotten a shot of that blacksmith shop that I have photographed now. This will be the third or fourth time. So I'm hoping I get it right this time. Let's talk about what camera I have though. I'll tell you, it seems that I can't shoot a video on a day that isn't like windy, gusty. Wow. I'm hoping the microphone does okay. So I've got a Spartus full view. Very interesting camera. I'll have all kinds of B-roll, I'll show you. Chicago, Illinois, made in USA. Well, the Chicago, Illinois part probably pointed that out, but that's okay, you'd be redundant. Medium format camera. I found it in an antique place. So for what I have read about this camera, it's basically a toy at this point. It was about as consumer grade as you could get back then. And by back then, I mean about the 1940s. It seems like this was as basic as you could get and using the medium format film, we're talking the Holga has many more options than this. So let's talk about it as basic as she is. We have a timer button or an instant button, by button I mean lever, and a shutter release lever. So if I put it for timer, it's basically bulb mode. If I put it for instant, it just fires the shutter. How fast? Seems like somewhere between 45th to a 60th of a second. Uh, documentation seems a little eh on that. It's like a Holga, you know, it's very mechanical in there. Well, all shutters are mechanical, but this is like, I don't know. It, it seems like we can't agree on it. We're gonna say a 60th. Anything below that, I'd be scared to handhold. So we're gonna say a 60th and pray that that's what it is. As far as what f-stop it might be, it seems like documentation is saying somewhere between f... What was it? Wait a minute. Let me consult the paperwork. Somewhere between f11 and f16. Yeah. So again, it's like, maybe, maybe that might, might be what it is. Um, no zooming whatsoever. Twin lens, obviously. I look through this one, I take through this one. It is, from what I understand, from what I've read, eight feet and beyond should be infinity. After that, we don't know. After that, anything closer, probably not in focus. Um, like I said, this is, it reminds me of like, I know, uh, I remember my parents and everybody I knew had one of those instant, uh, the 110 cameras, the little sliver looking cameras where, you know, it, it was, one step up from a disposable camera in that you could put a roll of film in it and it was the 110 tiny crap film so you know no features that's what we're looking at here pretty much and the viewfinder is let me, one of these open tops and it's got a mirror you can see through very cool i've never used one of these types of viewfinder so i'm finding it very cool very cool kind of pronounced that strange but we'll go with it so here's the one interesting thing. This is why I'm really excited to do this video is because I looked this up on YouTube. I looked it up on Google first, got all my documentation, looked up on YouTube, and there are a couple videos on this. They all seem to be missing something. They went about the camera, they talked about the camera, they talked about what it does, they talked about the features. They never showed a photo. <laughs> How are you gonna do a video about a camera and not show a single photo that the camera takes? What? So this video will actually talk about the camera like I done did already, and then show you some photographs from it. Whew, mind blown on that idea. You don't believe the, like YouTube, first couple of ones, they talk about it, no photo. That's like discussing a video camera and not showing me a single B-roll shot of something shot with the video camera. How are you not gonna show a still from the... Anyway, I will show you some photos from it. There's a shot here I've 
I've never taken this angle before. I like it with the three trees and the house behind it. So we're going to try that one out first here. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention it. It is loaded with HP5. So something easy peasy to deal with. If I could frame this right, I'm going to be really happy. Oh, we have clouds for a change. Holy crap. It's a miracle. Every time I go to shoot, there's nothing but clear skies. Clear skies are boring for photography. First shot done. I'll tell you what, I'm loving this uh, viewfinder. It's kind of cool. It's really, it really is a what you see is what you get, in theory, hopefully, type of camera. I really like it though. Again, it's six by six, so we'll get uh, 12 shots for this roll. My old nemesis, the blacksmith shop. The shot with the 100 year old Kodak was fine. It was just, it wasn't framed perfectly. Using that little prism thing was difficult. This on the other hand, there should be no reason to mess this up. We may have to Photoshop those power lines out of my way. Because they are messing up what could be a really nice angle here. Well, we may have to change locations here because I'm finding myself forcing it at this point. I'm not, nothing's jumping out at me. So rather than force it and get crappy shots, let's go find something else. Something that says, yes, this is the photo you want, sir. Oh, and there's more wind. I noticed this area here, just a little way, walk away from the village part. There's a step that's all falling apart right there. Pieces on, of it on the next step down. Kind of looks cool. So I'm trying to figure out a framing for that. kind of wondering if there's a shot. I was just setting up the video camera like, okay, this will be a nice shot, B-roll. I thought, that might be a nice shot photo. Like straight down with the fence and the steps, but as low to the ground as I can go. What if it's actually on the ground itself? Oh, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? actually helpful sometimes composing in the square format like this wouldn't I don't know that this shot would work 
in a standard like 35 mil or a six by nine medium. Ooh, oh, the sky's being generous. I love the way it looks right now. The clouds are awesome looking. Let's see, ready? This shot would probably look good in color. Okay. So we're back here in the office. Cool camera. I really liked using the uh, overhead mirrored viewfinder. Found that really cool for framing the shots. Um, I can't tell if we've got something with the shutter or possibly, let me back this microphone up a little bit, or possibly something along the lines of a light leak. I showed you the photos already, most of them, but you can see pretty distinct line I can't tell it's kind of there what an interesting lens too because it's obviously plastic the way the center is completely focused but it goes out very fast truthfully this shot I kind of wanted this whole area in focus but it really just the post is in focus and everything else went out it's not bad though and the light leak on that or the shutter issue it could have been the shutter just not moving fast enough and getting stuck in a spot but i mm, i can't really tell but it's not a bad shot it's photoshop a bowl um this one i'm just forbidden to get this shot apparently but you can see pretty rough on the light there don't know what's happening and then again really strong on this shot not as bad there but we're up in the sky and these are some other shots here um, now I'm not seeing it though if you look up here let me go zoom it in there's no real even sign of it up there in the, in the uh, tree and these are some other shots I didn't show during the other video part because I just wanted to move it along but I don't see it there I don't see it there Or there, or there. These are just two last shots I just fired on the way home. I mean, the possibility is that it was the shutter mechanism sticking a little. It hadn't been used, and as I went through the roll, it kind of, you know, got itself moving again, and that's why the later half didn't have any issues. Because I'm still in the same massive sunlight that it was that day, and, uh, so it's weird that if it was a light leak that it would just stop, you know, halfway through a roll. I don't really understand, but this one has something very interesting. Again, this is another reason why I'm thinking maybe something's going on with the shutter, because look at this shot, then look at the bottom area. It's kind of like real dark down there, and then light. It's almost like the shutter kind of got stuck for a second and, and underexposed and overexposed or something. I don't know. Either way, though, it probably just needs a quick cleaning, a little bit more of a cleaning than I gave it when I first got it. Um, I don't know if it's a light leak or not, because it kind of stops. So, but I, I, I do like this camera a lot. I will shoot with this camera again. I thought it was really fun. I think the lens is super quirky, almost as kind of very comparable to the Holga in that vignetting effect that it has because of the plastic lens but dare I say even more of a vignette effect maybe not darkening on the edges but just blurring out like crystal clear in the center and it goes to blur very quickly as it works out of the center just I thought it's cool I think it has like great characteristics um, and I like that with a camera where, where you get some characteristics out of the camera itself, you know, yes, they can all the T70 and and the EOS Rebel G Everything can take the crystal clear perfect and it's all based on the lens But sometimes when there's a little bit of characteristic coming from the camera itself That's kind of cool a little quirkiness to it a little little something extra that you know You may not even plan for especially with stuff like the Holga and with this guy here. So the Spartus full view fun camera I enjoyed it. I thought it was a cool shoot. I hope you enjoyed watching it. 
Um, I guess that's it for the episode, though. Like, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff, Etsy store, and uh, I will see you next time. This mirror thing, a little poofed up, is awesome for low angles because you can get right above it. Because you imagine a normal camera with the viewfinder, you have to be all like, I can't see through it. This makes life easy. And I know there's some right angle little uh, mirror things you can put on viewfinders or cameras. I gotta see if I can get one for the T70. Because th there's some shots, you know, you just miss because you don't want to get in the ground. I'll look that up.